But um, it is epic to be with you all this morning. My name is Logan. This is a picture of me from high school. Um, yes, I, I was a runner. I was part of my school's uh, track and cross-country teams. Any runners here in the room? A couple of us, a couple of us. Just for the rest of y'all, y'all to understand what we do. Uh, it's like what you do at practice for punishment, like running laps. Like that's what we do as a sport. All right, so uh, don't ask me why. That's what, that's what we do there. And I'm going to get back to the running in a minute. But what I'm up here to share just quickly now is the story of how I became a Christian and the difference that's made in my life. And uh, like Tim said, I also grew up in a Christian family. It wasn't until, though, I went to an event a lot like this, a lot like Big Deal Questions, that I began to see that there was actually real evidence for the truth of the Christian faith, that this wasn't just a fairy tale, it wasn't just a nice idea. It was actually something true. And it was at this event I remember learning about evidence from science, how the best scientists in the world now believed that the universe had a beginning, that there was this moment when something came from nothing, a moment when everything began, something so difficult to explain without believing in a God who created it all. I remember learning about uh, evidence from history. I remember learning about why we can trust the Bible, how soon it was written down after Jesus died and rose from the dead, how many thousands of copies we have from the first centuries, how much archaeology supports the claims the Bible makes. I remember learning about different religions, all these different religions in the world, what makes Christianity stand apart, how we can know it's true among all the other options out there. And if that question is interesting for you, particularly today, this question about different religions, I encourage you to come by the chat room I'll be doing this afternoon on So many religions, why choose one? Because I'm going to be exactly looking at this question. How can you possibly know one religion is true? And and is Christianity that religion? I think so. Come come hear why. (laughs) But so you see, it was at an event a lot like this that I began to see that the Christian faith was something really true. But see, the story of my faith doesn't end there because it made sense from that moment at the level of the mind but it didn't quite click at the level of the heart yet. And this is where I get back to my running. See, in high school, my life was all about running. I ran pretty much six days a week, 52 weeks of the year, for four years. I did the math. It comes out to about 17,000 kilometers. That's like running between here and England three times. So a lot of running. It was my life. It was what I did. And, um, and I wasn't bad at it. I, my time uh, running a kilometer was about two minutes and 40 seconds. I was talking with coaches at different universities. Um, really excited to, you know, this was high school. I was excited about the future. Um, and then suddenly, one day after practice, I had a sore knee. Two weeks later, sore knee doesn't go away. Go to the doctor. The doctor says you have patellar tendinitis and you have to stop running. And pretty soon, not running, you know, Conversations with coaches ended. My team, without me, goes on to nationals for the first time in school history. I remember where I was in my kitchen, watching on my computer the live stream of the race, watching my friends run the race that I should have been in. And I was crushed. <laughs> it really broke me. I mean, this is who I was. I was Logan the runner. That's, that's what mattered most to me. That's how people knew me. It had just been taken away like, just like that. And... It just rocked me. I was down for months. But it was, it was soon after that that I actually went on a service trip to Central America. I went to a country called Nicaragua. And it was there I was with this group of Nicaraguan Christians. And something about this group just blew my mind. Because here were these people who, like, many of them weren't going to get the chance or didn't get the chance to go to high school or didn't finish. Many of them were struggling just to feed their families. These are people in the world's eyes where like success and achievement matters most. These are nobodies. And yet they had something that I knew I didn't have. There was just something different about them. You could see it. They had this joy and this peace. And I didn't get it. And I, you know, I had seen Christianity make sense at the level of the mind, but I didn't realize until I w- was with these Christians that Jesus also spoke to the level of the heart. Because here's what was going on. Like, Jesus said about himself at one point, I am the bread of life. 
And when he said this, he wasn't just saying, like, I'm the nice little butter roll that's on the side of your dinner plate. Like, no, in his culture, this is where bread was everything. It was the main staple food. It's what you had every meal, every day. And so when Jesus was saying this, he was saying, look, I'm the bread of life. Your soul is hungry. It's hungry. You're hungry for something that will give you satisfaction, that will fill you up, right? But you'll never be full unless you find that satisfaction in me. And I think I'd heard this teaching before. I imagine a lot of you have heard this idea before. Jesus is bread, bread of life. But it wasn't until that moment, seeing people who were just feeding on something that was filling them up in a way I could see, I realized that I had been feeding on things that weren't filling me up. I think we all do this naturally. For me, it was my success as a runner. That's what mattered most to me. That's the thing that when it was taken away, I wasn't just sad, I was crushed. And I wonder what that is for you. I'm, like, it's the thing that you worry about. It's the thing that when you're not thinking about anything, your mind just wanders there. And what Jesus says is like, these things aren't bad necessarily. It's just they can't bear the weight of finding your whole worth and identity in that. It might be your good grades. It might be the approval of a friend group. It might be, um, it might be a relationship. And what I saw in these Nicaraguan Christians was in their joy and peace, I saw the satisfaction they had. It was a satisfaction that came from a personal relationship with Jesus, knowing that God loved them. How could they know? A lot of religions talk about a God of love because Jesus doesn't say, I love you. He shows it. They saw it on the cross. They knew it was a God who who had good plans for their life, who cared for them. And you could see it wasn't just a nice idea. It wasn't just in the head for them. It had sunk down in their heart, and it made a difference. And I saw that, and I, I, I just knew. I said, I want that in my life. And I remember the moment soon after that where I made this decision to commit to Christ, to say, like, like I see now that like, it's not just true, but I see that I've been searching for like, food and things that aren't going to fill me up, and I need you to be the source of my identity. And right away, here's what happened. Like, right away, I felt this this peace, but it was this deeper kind of peace. It was this peace knowing that no matter what happens in my life, that I was secure. I wonder if you've ever been to swim in the lake or an ocean, and you know that like up on the surface, there are all these waves, right? And you're like bouncing around a bit. But then the moment you go underwater, right? It's like calm, peace. And that's what being a Christian has looked like for me. Because it hasn't meant that there haven't been more disappointments in my life, where life's just been easy, but it's meant that when the waves are going on, up and down, up on the surface, that there's always this underwater space that's there. There's this peace. There's this security I have. My worth is found on something that can't be taken away. An injury could just wipe out four years of work just like that. But finding worth in a relationship with God, that's something that lasts. And the question I, I want to ask you this, this morning is, you know, do you have that kind of deep peace and joy that will last no matter what? I say that because I think that you can. And I think it's epic you're here today. You're thinking about these big questions. And my hope for you is just that you'll see today that Christianity isn't just true at the level of the mind. Though I think that is the case. And I encourage you to ask the questions that you have, which are real and good. But I think that I also want to encourage you to see that starting a relationship with Jesus is something that can give you a real peace and joy that can't be taken away. It's something that can really change your life. So, thanks for listening. Love to see you maybe this afternoon if you want to chat about different religions, but that's just something to give you something to think about at the start of the day. So, thanks, guys. Thank you, Logan.